I need to do a hypothesis test on a mean? Well, a hypothesis test on a mean takes the t test statistic. So we'd have to go through and find the t test statistic before we actually do our our probability test. And I wanted to find the p value in order to be able to test out this hypothesis. So that's the idea is we're going to find the p value for this t. So to do that, um, we we're going to do it for all three. So let's say we have a t in particular. Let's say I just go through the process and find my t. Right, whatever that process is, we have that equation. So let's say I find for a right tail test, let's find a, I say I find a t value of um, 2.5. And let's say for a left tail test, I find a t value, I'm not that inventive, so of negative 2.5. And then from there, let's say we have a two tail test of 2.5, why not? So, um, and we find these values, right, by using our t, uh, our equation for t, whatever that is, in whatever given situation for mean that it is, it doesn't matter. So, from here, we can then calculate our p-value, our p-value for this. And so this is where we're going to need to use it for our um, homework. So p-value equals this, and let me, this is just bugging me. Um, so I want to calculate the p-value now, and I have, let's say we have a population, a sample size of n equals 40. So from here, I'm going to do a right tail test. So now I want to do right tail test, so I hit your equals, and then I start typing it to t distribution. So let's do t, and here it comes up already. t distribution, t distribution, 2t, t distribution, rt. So this one's a right tail, this one's a two tail, and this one that doesn't say anything is a left tail. Uh, it tells you after this, returns the left tail student T distribution. So if I double click on this, it asks me to enter some other thing. It wants the X, which is actually the T. So I select my, uh, my cell that has my T in it. Hit parentheses, or I can just type in the T value that I got maybe from my calculator. And now I want the degrees of freedom. If I have a sample size of 40, then my degrees of freedom is, oops, my degrees of freedom is 39. And for cumulative, so wait, I'm doing the wrong one. Backing up. I want the T distribution for a right tail test. Why did I select the left tail test? So there's the right tail test. My bad. So we can back up. So here we go. So it still axes my T. Um, and my degrees of freedom is 40 minus 1, which happens to be 39. Right, so, because my sample size is 40, that's given to us, the stuff we're given. So the T we have to calculate. And this is my P value. So it's basically 0.8% is the probability of getting this T statistic, test statistic, for this sample size. Alright? So, and then you can put that into my math lab and hopefully you fix it. If not, just let me know. Um, so if I wanted to do a left tail test, right, if I had something where mu, if I was testing out the claim where mu is uh, less than some number, and I ended up with this test statistic of negative 2.5, then I could do run the left tail test. So again, I want to enter equals t, right, and here it comes up, and this one is the left tail test. So you return left tail t students t distribution. So I want to click on this one or double click, put in my X, which is my T, again, my test statistic, put in my degrees of freedom, which again is just, I'm assuming I have a sample size of 40, so my degrees of freedom is 39. And in this case, they want cumulative for some reason. It wants to say whether it's cumulative or not. So to do cumulative, we do want cumulative. We want to enter true. So for the cumulative. And then my probability. Notice they're the same because I'm using the same test statistic on the different side of the tail. So we get the same probability underneath the curve, which makes sense. Alright, <clears throat> so now we could say, okay, what about a two-tail test? Now, if I wanted a two-tail test, then I would calculate it with my probability. So if this is my t, again, and I would calculate it the same way. So equals t distribution, oops, t distribution two tail. So now I enter my X, which is my 2.5, and my degrees of freedom, which is 39. And we hit enter. And it gives us exactly 
the p-value. That we don't have to take this and multiply it by two like we did in class. This is the p-value. This is not the area under the curve on one side. This is the actual p-value. So now we use it and we say, okay, well, we can use that. So, so notice, right, the p-value is about double. This this p-value is double that. And so that comes from that comes from the fact that we're taking two of these to fix that. So it's already doubling it for us. So if we have a two-tailed test, we don't need to worry about that. We just use this p-value, this p-value that it's giving us. All right. That ends it, so have fun.